after this, we do, uh, you know, have Paige's meeting with the Divas. She, you know, again, tries to rally people like, oh, you know, the Bellas, they've been holding everybody back. You know, they're a machine. They've been running this whole thing for, for years. we got to take a stand. Uh, you know, the women are quick to point out, well, Paige, you know, it's funny that you're up there because you've turned on every partner that you've had. And Paige is like, well, that's true, but it shouldn't be about me. <laughs> you know, it should be about the Bellas. Let's keep focus. And when it seems like, because she makes them know that she's in a handicap match tonight, um, and they're all like, oh, why would you do that? Whatever. And she said, well, I'm doing it because somebody needs to take a stand. Now, who's with me? I don't have to be out there by myself, so who's going to help me? Um, and when it seems like at least one Diva's going to come around, the bell is interrupted, and Nikki's like, oh, thanks for inviting us to the meeting. And they pretty much make known that, hey, you know, ever since I helped Stephanie McMahon win at SummerSlam, no offense, Bree, and then Bree's like, none taken, because, I mean, obviously we're supposed to think there's no animosity left between those two. Um, no, there, it, there actually isn't. That's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, she says, I, I've been on a tear as Divas champion. So as she makes the illusion that, yeah, I've got Stephanie's stamp of approval, um, which, you know, what, I mean, it makes sense, but if she really had her stand for, I guess that was the whole experiment, though, with Nikki Bella being a babyface, because I remember when she had that one match with Naomi, and then Stephanie made Brie go get counseling sessions because of Brian, and a little bit of a disconnect there, but you know what, we're back on track, I'll roll with it, I'll suspend my disbelief, uh, and it says, yeah, I've got Stephanie in my pocket, you know, she approves of this, so what are you guys going to do? And they all walk out on page. Even so, Emma. Even, I know, my wife. We gotta have a talk about it. You know, that's that's not cool, man. It's not cool. Um, but yeah, Paige is left by herself. And then we get Paige versus the Bella Twins. And you know what? I, I've i got to mention that, you know, we thought that maybe we would have uploaded a live reaction to this segment because you think, oh man, everybody walked out on Paige. So clearly an NXT woman has to step up. Um, obviously, if you're getting this and we're talking about it now, you're not going to get that live reaction segment because nothing happened here. Yeah. Uh, you know, Paige does try and fight back. You know, she puts up a valiant effort, but ultimately the Bellas do come out on top. Uh, Nikki does hit the rock attack after she, uh, you know, throws Paige's shoulder into the corner. And I think she nailed uh, her, her forearm that she does. And then she hit the rack attack. Here's my thing about this that I want to say. I don't even really want to talk about the match so much as I want to talk about I'm really hoping they don't drag out this reveal too long. Some may argue that they already have. I, I'm probably even one of them because I've said that they should have done it in Money in the Bank. It just makes Paige look stupid that she keeps going out there by herself. There's a difference between valor and just naivety, and Paige is, I think, more demonstrating the latter than the former. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that the reveal is going to be a battleground, maybe in some kind of tag match, maybe before that so you get some hype. But, man, like, I think the crowd was really anticipating something you and I were, and just knowing that it didn't come again, so we were expecting Money in the Bank didn't happen, Raw Tonight didn't happen, and I, I just want to be able to care when it finally does happen. I will give them credit, like I told you in conversation, that they're trying to make whoever is going to help Paige seem important by holding these meetings, making explicitly clear that nobody else will take a stand. But I don't know. I, I think they may be waiting a bit long here. What do you think, dude? I think that tonight was the opportune moment because to me, if you're going to wait any longer, people are going to stop caring. And I think I've honestly started to stop caring. And I think it all comes down to not even necessarily whoever's debuting, but the page character right. page went in. Here's the thing. One of the dumbest, worst tropes that happens on television shows is irresponsible person says they're going to do something. They attempt to get help in doing so, can't get help, and then they get screwed over because they can't actually do what they said they were going to do. That's exactly what Paige did tonight. It's, I mean, how many freaking times has Eric Cartman done that on South Park? And they do it in a way that they're parodying their, themselves. Like, the, the, Paige said that she was going to do something about the Bellas. She got this two-on-one handicap match thinking that she could get help, got no help, Apparently, she didn't have a plan in place in case she couldn't find anyone on the main roster to help her, and she lost. And it's just, I mean, it's to be expected that she would lose in a two on one handicap match against twins. So I can't even say that much negatively about the fact that she lost, just the fact that she didn't have any kind of a backup plan. It's dumb. I mean, that's just it, Ash. I mean, the lack of foresight on her part. 
how am I supposed to root for somebody that's stupid enough to get themselves in these situations in the first place? Yeah. And, and, and and really, I found this whole thing, and I think I even kind of told you that when we were you know thinking that we were going to record and upload something, if something meaningful was going to happen, that you know it was going to be a lose-lose anyway, because if Paige was able to win on her own, well, then my immediate question is, why weren't you able to do that at Money in the Bank? Or why are you holding meetings to begin with? I mean, you clearly just proved that you can handle the Bellas on your own. So they really put themselves into a corner, and it's just, it's not making Paige look good at all. Yeah. And, I mean, I gotta say, uh, Draven G, I, I think, had the best comment on our live reactions to the Divas Championship match. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 100, how sick are we of the Bellas? I'm about at a 98. Well, I think this segment just pushed me to the 100 mark. I, I just want Nikki to drop that championship. As See, and as a I think here's yeah. my thing, John. And yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but no, I do no, want to but... say, I think that this will all be worth it if there's a big blow-off. And it horrifies me to say that because WWE is terrible at diva blow-offs. They really are. They, anytime they do a big divas angle, the blow-off is terrible. Look no further than SummerSlam this past year. So I'm putting a lot of eggs in a basket that hasn't really reaped any returns in recent memory, but if this blow off is worthwhile, it is going to make it all so much better. I do agree with that. I do agree with that. It's just, it's going to be interesting because you, you'd think here that the end game is Paige becoming a three time Divas champion, but maybe. What if the end game is debuting an XT women? Yeah. And, and you know, that, that is what I hope for. And, you know, maybe one will kind of necessitate the other. Like, the debuting NXT women will help Paige become a three-time Divas champion. Well, why, uh, would, why would NXT women want to debut just to help somebody else win a championship? Well, you know, maybe answering the call and making a name for yourself at first. I mean, Charlotte is kind of a baby face, so it's not like she would have that selfish motivation. If it's her, if it's Sasha Banks, that makes it a bit more ambiguous. But I guess it really all depends on who it is. Um, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But, I mean, yeah, the, the focus has been Paige is taking this stand. So you'd think that Paige is going to get the majority of this payoff with the byproduct being, oh, look at this NXT women's wrestler who got called up. Now let's see what she can do. And she's already being thrown in the fray with the Bellas, which I'm sure in WWE's mind is a pretty big deal. Um, How sad so, is that? Yeah. Do you want to know who outside of WWE sees being thrown into the fire with the Bella Twins a big deal? Uh, what people? How many? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Nobody at all. Um, all right, we go from that to our Machine Gun Kelly concert, and I think he gets through, like, a song or two, and then no, let's one song. Just one just song. one song? Yeah, because I had it on mute, so I really didn't know. Um, but then, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm dead serious, like, I'm actually glad I know, I that's why I laughed. Time. Yeah, because uh, thank goodness I tuned back in time, because then I saw Kevin Owens, and I'm like, oh, this is interesting, and he seems to be, uh... Telling Machine Gun Kelly, you know, he's like clapping for him. He's like, oh, great job, great job, you know, all sardonically and such. And then Machine Gun Kelly, he sticks his hand out thinking, oh, you know, I got a fan up here. That's pretty cool. Uh, Kevin Owens just looks at, his, at that hand and is like, get that hand out of my face. And he says something to Machine Gun Kelly that prompts him to shove Kevin Owens, to which Kevin Owens responds by kicking him in the gut and power bombing him off the stage. Uh, can I just say, for, first of all, I love this, obviously, but I think the real highlight for me wasn't even anything to do with this segment. It was the online response, because the hashtag, thank you, Owens, was going so strong. Originally, it was going strong because Kevin Owens made it that it was a John Cena free Raw, and then this just exacerbated that tenfold. I, this was absolutely wonderful. I read things like, Kevin Owens just did America a favor, um, Kevin Owens just saved uh, that segment, Kevin Owens did this and that. Just absolutely wonderful, and yeah, uh, like you said, credit to Machine Gun Kelly for taking that spot, because it did look a bit rough, and I am sincerely hoping that he's okay, but kudos to him for you know doing that. I'm sure he was probably stoked to do it on a certain level, right. and yeah, it just makes Kevin Owens look like a real scumbag, at least with the way you hear commentary tell it. So Okay, so, okay, three things. First of yeah. all, before any of this even happened, the segment where he's in the back with all the jobbers and Heath Slater calls him Shotgun Gordon... I died. <laughs> Second of all, it didn't hurt. It was literally a crash pad that he got thrown into with a mic under it. So he, he that's why it sounded so loud because it had like, a, well, maybe not directly under it, but it was mic'd up. Um, so that's why it sounded so loud and it was completely safe. And 
yeah, props to him for being willing to do it. But yeah, I don't think WWE would have let him take an actual bump. Even if it was friggin' cardboard, that would have been friggin' dangerous. Uh, but third of all, can I just say it is hilariously ironic to me that people were thanking Kevin Owens for powerbombing the rapper after the performance was over? Yeah, I can see your point there. But... How great of a scumbag does that make Kevin Owens that he lets the performance end before attacking the guy? Yeah, especially knowing how unpopular Machine Gun Kelly is. Well, uh, no, no, that's the thing. He's not unpopular. He's just unpopular amongst wrestling fans, which apparently Vince doesn't realize. Yeah, so great stuff all around. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, anything else you want to say about it? Uh, no, yeah. I mean, dude, this to me was the segment of the night. Yeah, definitely. This, well, okay, segment of the night until we got to the main event. But definitely, other than the main event, easily, hands down, segment of the night. I mean, I've said repeatedly, I, I freaking love douchebags, and Kevin Owens has just got a firm monopoly on my heart, man. That was beautiful. It's crazy, because, like, to me, if he would have come out and powerbombed Machine Gun Kelly before the performance, he would have gotten more of a babyface reaction than anything. Because it's like he would have been saving people from listening to something that they didn't even pay to see. Right. And that, that that really genuinely does annoy me when WWE does stuff like that and they think, oh, here, we're giving you something extra when all they're really doing is cutting out a good, like, 15-minute segment that they could have put on an entertaining match instead, which people actually would have been able to have paid to see. Um, but, like I said, if Owens would have come out beforehand and, quote-unquote, robbed people of seeing a Machine Gun Kelly performance they would have been happy about it, or at least most of them. I'm not saying all of them, because I know there are Machine Gun Kelly, Kelly fans, uh, and I don't have anything against them. I don't have anything against Machine Gun Kelly, but typically the wrestling fans that were there weren't there to see him. So the fact that he lets the entire performance finish, he even lets Machine Gun Kelly spout out a few random shout-outs after the freaking performance is over, and then he comes out and he's clapping and he does the kick to the gut and the power bomb. He is a heel on so many levels, and it's like he's just trying so hard to get people to hate him, but he's getting so good at getting people to hate him that he's starting to get cheered more. <laughs> right, right. It's amazing. 